Okay. What's new? What you got? Uh, <clears throat> real simple. And I'll have interject a little bit. What we, what we is what I've titled this here on this live video is "Reason to Ride Dwayne Elmer." The, the last one it was Dwayne Elmer story, so just have a different title. What well, what we really want to do is uh, discuss the, uh, of course, how you know everybody and uh, you, stand off. the standoff and well the stand the stand up in uh, Malheur, the uh, Harney County Resource Center. Uh, as it uh, was come to be known, uh, what what is that uh, that that use the uh, the occupation that it was called what the uh, adverse, possession? adverse possession? Yeah. So by adverse possession, it was. Uh, we'll need you to move even in closer there so that when this camera is turned, it's not going to hit the window. Uh, can we get your name? Stephen Pask. Stephen Pask is our photographer. And uh, our video man. Well, I'm going to use this. I don't usually use this, but. This is uh, William Wagner. Howdy. Improvise. So, yes, we did go to the studios and they ran us off. They had an exterminator Stand coming in. The chair so, you don't have to... what so, so, this is uh, this is how the professionals do it, unlike me. Oh, okay. We got we the people and God bless. Yeah. I like that. It reads God bless we the people. You'd probably not be able to use the back of the chair. Oh well, yeah, uh, God bless we the people. That is nice. That's nice. <laughs> I just noticed that yeah, now. That's nice. Okay, oh, yeah, so change everything. Uh, okay, so you've got that camera running. Take a look at my camera, how the angle looks. Well you sit down in your chair because we're gonna be uh, have the picture too. Okay, it's all ready to roll, I think. All okay. you gotta do is push this button. No, I, I think I had it set. Right? Right there. Don't move the camera because I got Well you've gotta sit in the chair. You've got your yeah, Okay, so I, you're you're just recording him and not yourself. Is that what you're well, saying? you'll get a little bit of me, but mainly you see it says God bless we the people. Oh, I so like this subliminal message so, in the background. So then let's move your chair instead of moving his chair. <laughs> yeah. Back over. <laughs> just slightly. You're good. You're good. You know what? I forgot my tie. And your hat. <laughs> Where's your tie at? Okay, so as uh, when Mr. Wagner gets his, uh, it's going to go out over the airwaves, and then uh, it will also go to his uh, YouTube channel. And uh, if you'll, well, you can't see me. If you'll look below <laughs> in his link. <laughs> we'll add some links and uh, support for uh, uh, Dwayne. Um, we'll get his address. Uh, his SID number here. His what? His SID number. I don't SID. know if that's been released yet or not. Okay. But they, they, you have to have a SID number and everything in order to write him letters. So, so that, yeah. we'll get a hold of that. Yeah, we'll talk to Sergeant Moan and get that information for sure. And Look at those. Are those rodents? Is there a rodent infestation in California? Uh, guinea, pigs. guinea pigs. Who's being tested? Oh, look, an orange tree in the backyard. And there is, a, it looks like an apple tree. Yep, apple plums, oranges. Mmm. And look at the tearing on the uh, Italian cypress out there. Look, there's guinea pigs running in the yard, too. Oh, where do he looks? It's sure. not like hurting cats, it's worse. It's worse than cats. <laughs> Can y'all see this guy out here? Oh, we've really, we've gone from Hellboy to guinea pigs. Yay! I don't know what you did, but you brought on the heat. Well, good, we're doing something right. There's the hat and tie. Okay, I got the hat, I got the tie, it's going to shut off. We're rolling, we're rolling. Rolling. Okay. My camera's <clears throat> rolling. Steven, you ready? Yeah. Okay. Welcome. Your name is? Jamie. And what do you know that I don't know that just happened? Well, Dwayne Emer was uh, one of the occupiers in Malaga Refuge. And um, he was convicted of digging a hole and he's now serving a year and a day 
He's going to serve a year and a day for digging, digging a hole. Digging a Let hole. me take off my Bundy cowboy hat because this makes my head swell up with pressure. Digging a hole. This is from Judge Brown. Uh, yeah, Judge Anna Brown. Um, Judge Anna Brown, the Wicked Witch of the West. When the FBI came and told them that they were coming in to kill them, he decided to dig a hole, hole to, to have hey, place Tom. to drop into to no, well, dodge no. the bullets. A place for okay, everybody to be so that they're not shot. Yeah, makes right sense. So now he's been con convicted by a judge. Uh, he didn't go in front of a jury or anything of a misdemeanor charge, so he has to go to prison for a year. And you say he rode his horse down to turn himself rode in? rode his horse, 1,100 miles. What? First of all, did anybody get any footage of him oh, absolutely. riding his horse? Ma Maureen Peltier got um, the whole journey. Wow. Well, she missed a couple of days here and there. I'd like uh, to see Andrea, any amount of that. Andrea Parker was there for quite a while. Um, Why didn't he get an attorney or just demand a jury trial? Do you think? I have no idea. I have no I'd idea. like to talk to him. Well, I'd like to talk to Jerry yeah. Delamus, too, who's Delimus, doing what? Yeah. 50 plus years? No, no, no. Um, no he no. had uh, Gary Dillon has eight. got seven years. Seven years. Was it eight or no, seven? Um, it, no, it was eight years because she gave him an extra. She, she gave him an extra year. For what? Uh, for coming and standing. For for uh, transporting uh, weapons across state yeah. lines. And I have the last interview with Jerry Delimus before he was uh, arrested. I'd like to see that. You got yeah. it on YouTube? Yes, I do. Uh, I'll get you the link. Uh, and so, also, Thomas Lockabar Stewart would like to speak with you also, so we'll uh, put you in contact. I'll give you his number. I would like the address of everybody who's in jail or who's pending trial. Um, actually, pending I have, trial. I have uh, a friend of ours is actually going through a list um, of all the ones that have been sentenced, every, every, all of them. There's 52 it, or 53. There's something wrong with the justice system, and I think what's wrong is it's not our justice no, it's system. Not. It does ours. not represent we the people. It represents the corporate Agenda 21, the globalist absolutely. agenda, don't you think? Yeah, that, oh, absolutely. It does. How many days were you up there in um, at the Malauer standoff? Um, I was born and raised in Brunswick, Oregon. Which is how many miles from the Malauer? 30 miles. 30 miles. So you're close. You know the crooked sheriff who got appointed yeah, by the sheriff crooked Ward. judge? Sheriff Grass or Judge Grassy, um, yeah, I'm, I was born and raised. There. Judge Grassy actually returned my call. Oh yeah, he left a message for me and he returned my call, but I uh, missed it. Uh, I wanted to interview him, to ask him why he doesn't believe he's a criminal, but I uh, didn't get a chance because we didn't have a live conversation. But it seems to me if your judge is appointed by a judge and the judge is crooked, the sheriff retired. I'd like to know why the other sheriff retired. Do you know? I have no idea. I wasn't there during that time. So the Bundys call for help. They win in Nevada. No. And I talked to Cliven Bundy at the Crown Plaza Hotel on, the, I think, the 19th or 20th first floor. We did an event there trying to start grand juries of we the people right. to start indicting the judges. David Fee picked up the major part of that cost, which was thousands of dollars. Uh, it had a potential of seating, okay. I think, 500 people. And you're overlooking the Pacific Ocean. You probably drove by it when you came up here and didn't even notice it. And Cliven felt we won. The Fed stood away, and I said to Cliven privately, you need to start a grand jury and indict the BLM or they will come after you. If you don't come after them, they will come after you. He said, well, it hasn't happened, but as my bodyguard and everything's cool right now. And, oh, but it did happen. And then a few months later, just what I feared would happen. He didn't indict them. He said, I don't know how to do a grand jury. Don't know anything about the grand jury. In fact, he said on film, which is on YouTube, he said, I just know when the militia showed up, the crap stopped. And he was right. And now he's free a man, 700 days in jail, and never convicted of even a misdemeanor. Right. And I assume his attorney Whipple, who I can't get to answer my calls, is going to counter sue for wrongful imprisonment, destruction of cattle, destruction of water lines, and it'll be in the millions. But the militia that answered the call. Does that yeah, seem right to you that they should be, they, they're sort of, yeah. 
Some of them are sit, sitting in prison. Sitting in prison, and right. they're the ones that stopped yep. the crap. Stopped How many, the bloodbath. They stopped the bloodbath, and yep. now we know that Daniel P. Love not only had a kill list with Bundy's name and Amon's name and Ryan's name and a whole bunch of militia people, he had a written down list, yep. which they didn't want to get on the court record oh, no. in Nevada in this last trial, and that's why that crooked, I think that's fair to say, that crooked judge... Gloria Navarro in her kangaroo court, she stopped that trial with prejudice because she didn't want no more videotape, no more witnesses and, and flipping sides and saying, hey. Clyburn actually said he's not happy with the outcome. I got that. Because two more hours in court Sorry. and it all would have came out. It all would have come all out. All the corruption would have been out, on, out for public view and, and that's why it was dismissed with prejudice. Is because there's so much corruption behind that there's, that they're not willing to... When If everything comes out, you're going to see Gloria appointed by Bundy after a recommendation by Harry Reid. Harry Reid's uh, office flunky named Neil yeah. Cornsey, with no experience, gets to be director of the BLM. With a, And then Gloria goes on, this was a setup to kill the Bundys. Only the Bundys didn't know it. But had they not called for the militia, and Daniel went out with his kill list, they weren't just killing the cattle to kill cattle. Right. The order said, the order I read, that is allegedly the true order, said they were to remove the cattle. Right. Didn't say anything about killing cattle. Said to remove the cattle. They weren't removing. They were boom, 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 boom. And I believe that based on this witness that called me, I believe the plan was to get the bunnies to get so angry, grab their guns, and they already had snipers set up. Snipers were ready to blow Cliven's brains out, Amon's brains out, Ryan's brains out. Ammon. Ammon, I'm sorry, Ammon's brains out. As soon as they picked up the rifle and came out of the house with it or out of oh, yeah. the car, their heads would have been splattered. The, like the sharpshooters were already set up in the hill, and according to one witness, Two of those snipers were mafia hitmen. They weren't even registered with the BLM. Well, BLM's got their own snipers that are... Well, they do, here, so. but somebody was covering, making sure that there was a lot of blood. And all the bunnies had to do was pick up their rifles, and it was all over. And then after they said, well, they were fighting us. They were shooting at right. us. We got their fingerprints on their guns. We got multiple witnesses. They had guns. And the bunnies never once touched a rifle or a handgun. And that's probably part of the reason they're alive today. But when you when you see that Gloria Navarro in her kangaroo court goes from a street uh, attorney, never been a superior court judge, just goes from that to federal judge, and then within two years she's the presiding federal judge. Yeah, I don't know yeah. all the statistics on that one. Well, I did some research on this, and people have been calling me with information and I can't tell you everything, but it looked to me like this was a slam dunk. As soon as the bunnies Sorry. grabbed their rifles or handguns, they were dead meat. Luckily, they never did, but the militia there, with all the witnesses and all those right. people. Were you there in Nevada in no. April? No, I wasn't there in April. But, so how many people are in jail from the Oregon thing? Let's flip back to that. Um, I, I don't know the exact numbers. Uh, there's in four. Seven of them, aren't there? Say, I'm sorry, I was reading a comment here. Say, say it again. I, I think there's seven that are still you know, either in jail or on their way to jail. We had a, <laughs> one was sentenced today. Okay, so Greg Burleson is in 68 years. We have. Uh, um, I'm talking about the Oregon. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, well, how many from Oregon? Because the Bundys walked out <laughs> not guilty in Oregon. The Bundys and also that lady who's out free right Sh away. Shauna Cox. Cox. Uh, yes, we had Ammon Bundy. We had his uh, older brother, Ryan. Uh, we had uh, Jeff Banta. Um, I'm not talking about the ones that are in right now. Oh, I was seeing who, 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 who the first, in the first trial. They they went to, yeah, uh, Neil Wampler. Dwayne Emmer. Yeah, in the, in the second round, yes. In the first round, you were talking about. I said so, the first So the first round, they all Neil Wampler. free. Yes. Nobody was convicted of anything. Nobody was in convicted that, uh, in Oregon. In Oregon. In the first year. That's right. Now they had a second tier trial. That's correct. And what's his name that rode his horse down? Dwayne. Dwayne. Yeah. Amor. He didn't show up for the trial. 
No, he showed up. Yeah. Oh, he did? Yeah, absolutely he did. But he did, couldn't get a jury. Um, he just agreed to cop a plea and show up. What happened to his horse? Uh, his horse is on the way back to... He's Syria. got someone to take yeah. it back up? Yeah. Do you have those names, Thomas? His Who is he in? Was it seems to me something's very wrong. And Tom, yes. Have Daniel P. Love, thug in charge of the BLM, with what, 100, 150 guys? They had more armor on than oh, yeah. I had in Vietnam. And I knew people were trying to shoot me, but these guys had more armor. But that's your every, everyday officer nowadays is a, is a fully militarized soldier. Yeah, this is. They isn't, step out of the squad cars. It's not just the BLM. It's every single law enforcement individual is, yeah, you're is right. armed to the teeth. Yeah. Period. Well, they're going to need it if they keep pushing the people well up against the wall. But I I I can see a righteous grand jury correctly formatted with their bonds, oaths of office, could indict Anna Brown, just based on five pages of the transcript that I read. She should be indicted. Well, she so should, should be Myrie. waiting for trial without bond. So should Myrie. So should Harry Reid. So oh, all Harry Reid, definitely. All the way down the line. But nobody knows about Neil Cornsey. He was head of the BLM. What qualified him out of the thousands of people in the BLM that have been serving in the BLM for decades, what makes him suddenly qualified to go from office flunky for Harry Reid to director of the BLM, and then same Harry Reid recommends on Christmas Eve 09 to the Judicial Select Committee on Appointments on Christmas Eve 09 to Obama to appoint on May 10th of 2010. Gloria goes from street attorney with no judicial experience that I know of She's suddenly a federal judge, and within well, two or three years, she's right. presiding. So I look Can at this and to? I say, I better go get my battery. Of it, I've been in the past right. few years. Is the car Every open? single one of them is the same way. Is the car open? Unfortunately, yeah. I, I have to agree. That's what I have Montana, noticed. Nevada, Oregon, all of them. They're all the same. Yeah, right? Nevada is so corrupt, I won't even go into the state anymore. It's just so beyond New Jersey and Nevada, I won't even go there. The last time I did any filming in New Jersey, I think, was 07. Yeah, I think it was 2007. And what I saw was just appalling. And I said, I'm never going back to New Jersey under any circumstance for any reason. Well, and my, my fiance is from Jersey, and she lives in Nevada now. So. <laughs> and Nevada's the other state. So we got six guys going to jail that were militia up in the mail hour. Um, they... Some of, them, some of them weren't militia. They were just they, there. They were there. Jason Patrick was part of, he was a spokesman. He was, and there's Pete Santilli was Pete militia. Santilli, right. he, was he was media. They didn't care. They put him in jail right. anyway. Well, there's there's a lot of stuff going around on the internet about that whole scenario. But um, How many people do you think that you met up there were fake militia? Were the three percenters fake? Uh, some of them were, obviously. I mean, we had... Were they government three, agents or government stooges um, sent there to... Oh, uh, yeah. At one point, there was more informants at in Oregon. <laughs> there was actually more informants on the refuge than there were actual occupiers. That's amazing. That's that's something people should keep in mind. You have to know who you're dealing with 16, long in advance. 16 known informants there at the, at the Mount here. 13, 14, 15, 16? 16 known informants. And they don't want their names publicized in court records, do they? Well, they're out there. Yeah, they're out there. We know who they are. And so it makes me wonder, how many informants were in April in Nevada. 2014 near Bunkerville under the I-15? Well, they didn't need that many informants. I mean, they already said that they had that they'd had uh, plainclothes officers out there at, uh, uh, to evaluate the oh, amendment zones, the First Amendment areas. Yeah. Yeah. So they already had plainclothes mixed in with everybody else. So. Well, it strikes me you. that uh, you know I was asking people to watch my show to call two zero two four five six one 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 and ask Trump to give a general full pardon to all blanket the Bundys, a blanket pardon with all rights restored as if they'd never done anything wrong. Now that's not necessary for the Bundys, but you ought to do it for Dwayne. Any of them that were involved. You ought to do it for all the militia. He needs to pardon these
guys because he's been wanting to tell the Ninth Circuit of the federal court system, he's been wanting to slap them upside. This would slap the Ninth mm. Circuit upside the face. Whoops. Did I do it? I'm sorry for that, people. Sorry. Um, if, if, if the Bundy militia and the Malauer militia, if they got all blanket pardons. pardons, that would slap Anna Brown upside the face like saying, you're a dumb, wicked witch of the West. And all these people you convicted, I'm going to give them full pardons with all rights restored as if they never did anything wrong. And now we start your indictment. That's what should be happening to Gloria Never. She should be she should be incarcerated right now, in my opinion. Absolutely. I don't know um, why the people in Nevada haven't formed their own grand jury. It only takes thirteen to twenty three people. All they gotta do is get their oath of office correct, get a bond from an insurance company, file it, and have a disbarred attorney guide them through the ropes so they don't get arrested like that uh, grand jury up in uh, Colorado that was going after their bond money. They wanted to collect the bond money. I don't care about the bond money. I want to see the crooked judges sitting in jail. Absolutely. And there's so many of them. And one of the things I, I have, in fact, I have the book upstairs, is the original 13th Amendment ratified in 1812. Under this amendment, as soon as you join the bar, you lose your citizenship in the U.S., and you are no longer a U.S. citizen, and you are forbidden under the original 13th. <clears throat> Did you know about this? No. Yes, and, for... and and let me interrupt you real quick. Uh, Mr. Easley's <laughs> off camera. He's interrupting you. Okay, and, and Thomas Lockevar Stewart, um, he came from New Jersey. He came to the Bundy Ranch in 2014 and also up to Oregon, um, and, and he's in a halfway house now. He had uh, some firearm charges there. So... Um, and as you were saying, I just, I'm sorry I interrupted you, but, uh, and Thomas wants to get you on the show tonight, too, if you, uh, if you can. We'll see. Okay. Um, but I can show you an original book from 1822 with the 13th Amendment. Pause a minute. Stephen Pitt. Pause button on my camera. I'm going to get that and put it on camera. Yeah, you and I have talked about that actually also. You and I have talk, uh, spoke about that, that, that yeah. you have that book. I uh, have it. And I'm going to get it right yeah. now. I'm not bullshitting. <laughs> okay, we're still live over here. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Give me a minute. Okay. So stand by here. Let me get my glasses back on here. Yeah. So... The 13th, that's right. And uh, Thomas has covered that as well. And uh, so RTR Truth Media, uh, you can find uh, Thomas's channel over on uh, YouTube as well. And uh, you'll find a lot, a lot of uh, research and information there. That's right. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Tom. Um, okay, is that what I do? How do I do this? That right there, maybe? Oh, okay. I got you, Tom. And add. I think I got you coming in. Hey. There's Tom. Hey. Hey, how are you, brother? I'm doing really good. Um, I support William Wagner's research on the 13th Amendment. I see him coming back. Uh, when you go on camera, I'm going to jump back off again, or you can, or you can knock me back off. But, but um, we have taken his material as well, and we went to the Texas State Library, the Sam Houston uh, uh, Research Center in uh, Liberty, Texas, and we recorded uh, similar books that he is he's, uh, showing to you right now. Okay, we're back rolling here. Oh, now we're back. We're back rolling here on camera. The first Constitution of Maine from 1825, it's very, very fragile. It basically has cardboard covers with thin cloth over it. It has the original 13th Amendment. This is from the state of Connecticut, 1838. But when you open it up, it actually says 1839. And here's the Facebook. It has the 13th Amendment. 1839, the statute laws of the state of Connecticut, and it gives the federal constitution, and the 13th Amendment is in here. And this one is from 
This is also from Connecticut. This is 1835. Yeah, you can see it on the binder. It has the original 13th Amendment. This is from, uh, this is from, what's, this is Rhode Island. Yeah, I've already got it. Thumbnail. These are the public laws of the state of Rhode Island. I don't know if it focuses in. But Pull your it, top cover back, so there you go. 1839, and I'll turn the page and I'll read this to you. Because uh, this is kind of amazing, and they never tell you about this. On page 46, and this 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 book is from, uh, this one is from 1822. If you look close down here, it actually says 1822. And on page 46 is the original 13th Amendment. And no lawyer, no judge will tell you about this. And if you ask them about it, they'll say, Oh, it was never ratified. Well, excuse me. So since second generation of founding fathers were not stupid, and they didn't reprint mistakes for 50 years. Here's the original 13th Amendment. Can you got that, Stephen? Right there? Got it. Okay, I'm going to read it to you. It's short. It's very simple. Uh, it's, if any citizen of the United States shall accept, claim, receive or retain any title of nobility or honor or shall without the consent of Congress accept and retain any present pension office or emolument of any kind whatever from any emperor, king, prince or foreign power, that's what the bar is, such person shall cease to be a citizen of the United States and shall be incapable of holding any office of trust or profit under them or either of them. And it doesn't say just judges. That means every attorney who's sitting in Congress has no right to hold that office. He's engaged in high treason. And I have these four volumes that paid a guy named Gus $1,000 a piece because I wanted to have the originals. This is an original I just showed you. This is 1822. That's a 196 year old volume. And you look at the, the, the edge and you can tell by the way the pages are are crinkling up and turning yellow. It's the real thing. It's not a copy. It's not a reprint. Now do your research and you find out it was never unratified. It was never repealed. Even though they just stopped printing it after 1868, it was never repealed. So if something is not repealed, it's still the law. Therefore, Anna Brown is guilty of high treason for taking an office of judgeship the prosecutors, who are a member of the bars, are guilty of high treason. Uh, Gloria Navarro, or Navarro. 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 I like to say Navarro in her kangaroo court because it rhymes. Gloria is guilty of high treason. Terrible. Judge Geck in this county is guilty of high treason. Uh, Judge Herman in this county, Santa Barbara County, California, had no oath of office on file when I demanded to see it. Took him a day and a half to go print one up, backdate it, and have his wife backdate the signing of it. But they're supposed to have it on demand within minutes. They didn't have it for a day and a half. That's just Judge Herman. But this one from Maine is 1825, and you can see it's really fragile. I'm not going to open it because, take my word, it's in there. Um, so if these 13 amendments have been on the books all this time, who's got a vested interest in making it disappear? the federal government, and specifically, you fill up the federal government with bar card, what I call the bar carded mafia. One third of Congress, one half of almost all the state legislatures are attorneys who are engaged in high treason. That's why they won't talk about it. No judge will honor this. If you take this into court, they will say, no, 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 you're crazy. Those books don't exist. Yeah, they do. I got them right here. <laughs> we see. We got them. And other people have them. I'm not the only one. And there's a, uh, the Virginia statutes at large. People have copies of that. Every state prior to 1866 that existed adopted the original 13th Amendment. So I look at that and I say the wrong people are going to jail for digging a oh, hole. Absolutely. Yeah. Digging a hole to protect yourself against a federal onslaught after what we know about the federal BLM now with Daniel Love planning. Well, not to mention the BLM 
in the Hammonds. Well, yeah, we didn't even talk about the Hammonds, and that's why the Bundys went up there to help yeah. the Hammonds. Father and son Hammond uh, refused to sell their ranch because they refused <clears> to <throat> sell it. The federal government said, oh, really? Oh, really? You won't sell it? We'll, well get they, you. they attacked him for over 24 years. Yeah, I mean, 24 it's been, years. It's been a fight for every rancher, farmer, everything for, for the past 30 years. Yeah, and the Bundy's main yeah. crime was growing cattle for people to have steaks and hamburgers. Yeah. I'd like to interject this uh, this guy, the Center for Biological Diversity, uh, diversity suckling. That there's a whole crutch comes on the tortoise. Okay, so the the tortoise is benefited by cattle on the land, and, and this is and this is where we need to kick it out from. Coexisting for yeah, there's 300 year study that that shows the existence and, and the benefit. Mr. Easley's jumping back 20 some mm. years originally they told the Bundys and the 52 ranchers that gave up before the Bundys the Bund that's another thing didn't tell you. the Bundys if you haven't been following are the last of 53 ranchers in what they call the strip north of North Las Vegas up to the gap where you go in towards St. George and the river comes out and it's really that area has two very rare minerals and they want to strip mine it. And the ENN Corporation, which is a communist Chinese front group for the Chinese communist military, wants to bring in 5,000 Chinese to strip mine that. But they had to get the Bundys and the others out. Cliven Bundy is a hero. He should have his, his face engraved at Mount Rushmore. He's on a coin. He, he, he should be on more than a coin. He should be up on, on up there on Mount Rushmore. He did more than two of those heads up on Mount Rushmore ever did. He stopped the BLM, and not only that, he suffered 700 days. None of those heads on Mount Rushmore ever spent 700 days in jail upholding the Constitution and pushing the federal wow. government back into their 10 square miles of Washington, D.C. and their military bases. Cliven did that, but he paid a terrible, terrible price to do that. And then they cut him off. Gloria cut him off because if the jury, don't you agree? Yep. If the she jury had been did. allowed yep. to give a verdict, it would have been so damning. It would have been <laughs> like the Michael Jackson trial that I went to, and I was the only one that said, Michael's going home free. The prosecutors have falsified all the evidence. They've all been caught. The witnesses have been caught in their lies. Same thing here. When Wooten changed sides, yep. that was a point where I'm sure a, a light went on in Gloria Navarro's head saying, oh, my Satan. I'm um, in actually, deep trouble. I, I think the um, there there was a lady, Pamela, I think was her name, that came on the stand that, that was the one that actually released the information about there being a camera uh, w over watching over the uh, Bundy ranch. And because they withheld that information and hid it for two trials for <laughs> oh, two years. For two so, years. Rugwell was her name. Yeah. Rugwell. Rugwell. Yes. Rugwell. Pamela Pamela Rugwell. Rugwell. That's not Pamela. It's uh, I forget her first name. It's Rugwell. Rugwell. She, she's the one that first opened the door. But how many other agents are going to flip sides when they see? Because I'm sure all those BLM agents didn't know Daniel had a written kill list of people oh, should sure. be killed sure and murdered. That's sure. premeditated sure. murder. Yeah. So every one of those BLM agents, including Wooten, are accessories to a pre-planned murder. They had pictures of, right, of uh, Eric Parker and Clyde and Bundy with red X's on them in the notebook. Yeah, they, I mean, they, was, they also had pictures pinned up on the on the bulletin board. board. Yeah, yeah, with, yeah. with X's. Office. Yeah. I'd like to see photos of those walls with those pictures, but I don't think... Yeah, Eric, Eric Parker, he, he was up there. The wall and shredded them on the, on the 12th. Yeah, and this they was what Ryan... Everything that was there. They shredded all the documentation, and that's what started the... They called it a hurried shredding. See, I was in that's court. That's prison of felony because you're hiding evidence. Oh, whatever. Yeah. You're destroying evidence, so... Whoever shredded that needs to be indicted yeah, as well. Beyond the uh, beyond the Brady violations and the Giglio violations, they, this see? is an outright. It was a shoot to kill and cover up operation. A shoot to kill and cover up, and I think there's even more that we don't know yet. I mean, I would have never dreamed that they would have actually had a written kill list where they actually put it in writing. This guy must die. This one. This one. This one. Going to kill these people. 
that's premeditated murder with malice of forethought. You get absolutely you can get the death penalty for that. And I'm wondering why the US prosecutors haven't gone after Daniel P. Love in the second in command and Neil Cornsey and said, Come, we've got some handcuffs for you. Absolutely. We want you to sit in this nice safe room because we want to protect you from the militia. And we might just put you on trial. Maybe. That's what should be happening. It's not happening. They're so well protected. Um, Larry Clayman is uh, right now they're they're going for establishing the um, jurisdiction in the state of Nevada to, for the, the control of the lands. And he's then he told me that uh, then he's going for uh, to have Myrie disbarred, which I don't think is uh, is near enough. Oh, no, no. disbarment is no, no. Yeah. <laughs> he's an accessory to murder. He's an accessory after the fact to murder. And I know a man that was working here. Uh, in this town, who didn't know that his relative was going to kill somebody, just drove the car and found out after he killed him that he'd killed him. But he didn't know driving him there. He got 25 years in jail for finding out after the fact and not immediately calling the cops. And that was a relative of his. He did 25 years for something he didn't know happened. So I think the prosecutors, not just Steve Myers, but all of those prosecutors. Myrie. Myrie, I'm sorry. Myrie. Steve Myrie and all the prosecutors need to be held for accessory to murder. Nadia Ahmed and Stephen Myrie were at the Bundy Ranch in uh, yeah. previous to April uh, 2014. There is early as uh, uh, of March. Yeah, 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 and, yeah, and yeah, yeah. They were out there during the the operation. They were uh, they were, they were trying. That. Yeah, they were trying to entrap um, the Bundys, like, like you were sp speaking of earlier. Now, also, I. Uh, this is secondhand in hearsay, um, but I understand at the airport that uh, the uh, governor was there. Uh, oh, boy, I, I probably not even say this without saying it, but the sheriff was there, um, uh, Harry Reid, um, and, and somebody from D.C. There there were higher high ups yeah. that, that stayed outside the uh, the local scene there. And I, I'm sorry I don't have uh, – can't, can't collaborate. I'm wearing my Bundy hat because I've been wearing this Bundy cowboy hat. Uh, because these guys are the most honorable, honorable gentlemen I've seen anywhere because they paid the price. They spent months, years in jail, and now the militia is paying the price. And people, you need to call 202-456-1111 and say full pardons for all the militia from Malhauer, Malheur, Malheur Resistance, and for the Bundy's stand, stand in 2014. Stand up. Stand we up. need to see the real criminals that were wearing the BLM outfits. And we need to find out who else was wearing BLM <laughs> shoulder patches and uniforms, but weren't really in the BLM. Well, I'll tell you and something we else. We need to identify the Las Vegas Metropolitan Bomb Squad people that were out there. What was they doing? They're way outside their jurisdiction. This was metropolitan. There's video and photos of them out there. What were they doing? They need to be held as accessories to murder. And the reason they need to be held, the Las Vegas police had no idea. But that doesn't matter. Under the law, if you assist somebody who's planning premeditated murder, you are as guilty as they let's, are. Let's not forget the uh, Oregon State Police. Oh, yeah. I forgot. The, the Oregon State there. Police stood yeah. around and just watched the Clark County police stood around and did nothing. The sheriff of Clark County could have stopped all of this if he had just said The done. sheriff of Harney County could have stopped everything that was going on if he had just done his job and protected now, the people. There, there were sev several uh, uh, tech squads there. There was from L.A. They had uh, se se several elite uh, sniper teams. And you know that... The, this, what do they call them? Special response teams. <laughs> Special response teams. Right. They call them kill snipers. Now, yeah, and Dan, Dan Love, he was out there all cowboyed up with his ball cap on backwards. Yeah. Uh, his rifle slung over there, uh, dressed as a civilian. And how many other feds were out there in amongst us there at the, in the Toko Wash? Well, I, I, I'm, I'm sure if it all comes out, you're going to find out there were at least three videotapes that we have not seen or heard of. 
You're going to find that out. If everything comes out, if Whipple does a thorough job, Rico. that's a problem. He will need money because this whole process takes a lot of money. They make it deliberately expensive so the criminals win. I mean, the bar carded people win. Ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. But the average citizen doesn't have the money. They can't, they can't keep slugging it out and slugging it out. So we named the guy that was just arrested today or turned himself Dwayne in today. Amber, yeah. Wayne? Dwayne. Dwayne. How do you spell his last name? E-H-M-E-R. Dwayne. And who else up in Oregon is going to jail? Yeah. Jason Patrick's uh, going to be sentenced in March. Well, he's uh, he's filed to for retrial. And, uh, Jace, uh, Jake Ryan was sentenced at 2.30 today. I've not heard. Uh, he also filed. Yeah. So uh, they, they got petitions in to get it to go back to court. This, this is a case where Tom Mezzer should do a pro bono. Should st and I know him. I, I'll call him and see if he'll. I don't know if he will, but I'll call Tom Mezzer because he he does when he does his job. He does a really thorough job. Uh, that's why they weren't able to buffalo the jury in the Michael Jackson case. So how many militia do we have totally in jail? They never did, but the militia. <laughs> how many? From, yeah. from both of them. From both I'm, of them. I'm not sure how many from both of the. Okay. Well, thank you for coming in and uh, stopping by Santa Maria. I wish we could have had that number. Which number? On. No, I I don't. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't. And you know what? There there are so many great people, men and women that uh, have taken a stand, and and and, and the the standoff, the standoff was. Uh, um, by the feds. It, it wasn't the, the folks that came up to stand. I'm out of tape. I just saw the light. Go okay. Off. So write your name down so I'd be sure to get it down right. right okay, folks. I've got a little bit of tape left here, but I just have to work that out. Write your name and write down the guy's, uh, Dwayne's name. Uh, so I can, maybe I can get, I was hoping to get a little bit. I, I will, uh, I'll get you all the information and uh, I just wish forward it to you. Yesterday. Yeah, you know what, I, I, I really, I it was a missed know. opportunity and, and I feel like an idiot. I, I didn't know the studio was doing, because uh, we need termite control. It's literally the yeah, termite. So that's what you need, do I need your name? I need your name. Give me a phone number in case I want to call you back. And if you can give me the address for Jerry Delamus. Delamus, yeah. And these others, I'd like to write them a letter. Okay. Because it's very lonely sitting in jail. Sure. Person. And Jerry writes to his wife, and she shares also. Uh, Susan. Somebody, somebody had all their addresses up and where to write to Cliven and Bundy and all of them before, but it's gone. Really? They're all out, and I can't find it anymore. Um, there, I think, I think Maureen has. That's all what that I thought. Yeah. yeah. She'd have all the SID numbers and all uh -huh. her locations and everything. We got to get. Clement Bundy's uh, his busk up on Mount Rushmore because he literally pushed the. No one has done. Add yourself this. back in, Tom. Uh, I'm going to bring Tom in while we're we're going sure, like this for a few I'm minutes done. and. My and, tape uh, is done. Are you still rolling, Stephen? Stephen's still rolling. Okay, so I'm going to wait for him. Um, get a shot to, of, of. Yeah, the P3 list. Uh, Tom. Put Tom. The camera back. It's in your way. Got the P3. Tom, add yourself in here and let me bring you in and we're going to put, there we go. All right. We're going to bring, uh, we're bringing Thomas in. We're adding now. Okay. So he's coming up here in just a minute. Hey. There's Thomas. Tom Lockenberry, okay. Stuart RTR Truth Media in a federal halfway house right now. <laughs> Can you hear well enough. I That's heard right. somebody's in a federal house. Yes, this yeah. is Thomas Lockhart Stewart. Yeah, I'm Resurrect the Republic, RTR Truth Media. Oh, yeah. Okay, I've seen that. Yes, and I've yeah. seen you too, William. Uh, uh, all of my listeners and the people that go to my website, Resurrect the Republic, yeah. we have supported your work on the 13th Amendment for a very long time. I had my wife go to the uh, Sam Houston, Texas State Library in Liberty, Texas, and she went in with the camera crew and we recorded their copies of the Virginia Annotated Code with the 13th Amendment in it as well. So uh, this is something that we've been trying to educate the public about for a very long time. You know, it's, it's kind of one of those issues that it's near and dear to my heart. Uh, uh, we as Americans have a responsibility to know our history, 
our history is is crucially and critically important, especially the you know original intent of a lot of the laws. Our founders weren't stupid, and a lot of corrupt no, men, a lot of corrupt men have. No, they were uh, stupid, yeah. and a great many of them that signed the Declaration of Independence uh, were wiped out financially or dead by the time the U.S. Constitution was signed. Uh, and George Washington became the first four-year president, which most people don't know. We had we had four one-year presidents before George Washington. That's correct. Most men don't never heard of the original Thirteenth Amendment, and for a long time, I thought it was just patriot folklore. And that's why I told Gus, "You deliver those books. Don't send them to me through UPS. I don't want them lost. You you deliver them to me in Santa Maria, and I'll pay you a thousand dollars a piece." And I did. I paid them in cash. Because to me, it's important to document. And that's why I've got these four books. And I, I try to protect them a little bit. Um, 1838, yes. it said. And this one is from Maine. It was the Maine broke off from Massachusetts. And they, they just had their state statutes and the Constitution with the 13 amendments. And that's 1825. I don't want to open it up. Wasn't and it? And this is the one I usually. Wasn't it Representative Tremblay in, uh, uh, I believe, New Hampshire that convened a panel uh, that they found their ratified copy in their uh, in their archives and and. I, th I think you're right. They did. Yeah. And uh, the problem is, the bar carded mafia. We call the <laughs> bar association. They call themselves members of the bar. Number one, they don't have a license to practice law because you can't license to practice law. That's it's, right. it's a common law right. Number two, they've now infected all three branches of government, which is the real tragedy. And it tells you in the Federalist Papers, which is a separate document. Oh, yeah. I forget what chapter 42 or 32. It says if you ever have the same hands group in all three branches of government, you'll have absolute tyranny. Yes. And that's what we've got. We've got absolute tyranny because you've got lawyers in the executive. Lawyers fill up half of Congress. Ron Paul was a rare congressman simply because he was a medical doctor and not a lawyer. Right. But virtually every congressman you look at, every other one, is a lawyer. Well, you, and you when know, they joined the bar, William, um, they lost the office. My father and brother were both attorneys and judges, and... Um, I can tell you after many long conversations with my father that this has been a problem of the, the uh, funding for the foundations that control the curriculum in these law schools. A lot of these lawyers don't understand this. They don't know it. There are a lot of really good men and women who, who, who seek to go on to this profession not understanding the nature of it. And that's why when they hear this information, it's like a shock to them because it's, a, it's an attack on their integrity. But they have to be taught, too. They have to learn their history because they're part of an organization that has controlled the entire government. And we're all, like you said, all three branches of government. And But, you know, there's a lot of good people out there like Chris Ann Hall and, uh, and many more uh, of her ilk that are uh, awakening or awakening. What's that? Yeah. There's Michael Mills in Texas. He's a good soul. He just doesn't know the true law. Right. He doesn't know the true history. Uh, Thomas Mesro's a, a really good person. Even if he wasn't a lawyer, he'd be a really good person. Right. Uh, he just has a good soul. And there's a few of these people. It's my hope that this will be the year, 2018. I'm going to publish a new book. <laughs> And it's going to have the documentation from all these ancient books. And we'll hold a major conference for people to come to and get a copy. And they'll be able to see the Virginia statutes at large. You'll be able to see these originals. And then they'll see the certified pages from these documents in the new book. Yes. And we'll, we'll, I'll have thousands of them printed. And we'll get them in the law schools, we'll get them in the schools, and it'll be a battle because the people that control the curriculum will say, no, that's not true, that's not right. But yeah. I've got offers out to two professors right now, and uh, I've shown this to two disbarred attorneys that didn't know there was an original 13th Amendment. Right. So when I showed right. them the book, I said, oh, my God, I went to two of the best law schools, I've got three law degrees, I never heard of this. There you go. And they went to the best law schools. There you go. Okay. That's your case in hey point. Guys, real quick, uh, hold on, real quick. Uh, go ahead, Tom. Mr. Wagner, I respect you. 
and I thank you. You've been a mentor to me over the years. It was your material that put me on to this, and I want to personally thank you uh, from one patriot to another, sir. You have my deepest respect and support. Mine as well. Keep plugging, because I'm in my 70s, and I'm, it's getting hard. It's okay. <laughs> We're, we'll pick up the mantle when you're ready to retire. <laughs> yeah, well, look for this book. I'm going to get it done this year. It's going to come out. I just need the cooperation because I don't have all the books from all the pre-1868 states, and we need to get them professionally photographed, professionally certified that they came from the actual book yes, and place that just like the guy that wrote The Law That Never Was. Yes. He's yes. out of Chicago. Well, from one New and Jersey proved, to another, sir, I came from New Jersey too, and uh, I can tell you that uh, <laughs> I'm happy to be out of New Jersey. <laughs> God yeah, bless you, sir. I, I'll never go back to New Jersey. No. Joyzy, of all things. I'll right, never go place. to New Jersey. Well, thanks, Tom. What state are you in now, Tom? Uh, I am in Oregon in a federal halfway house for my involvement in the Oregon standoff. I'm in a halfway house right now, so I'll be released soon. But... What did you do? Did you move one shovel full of dirt to make that hole? Or... No, I violated the interstate commerce clause by being an unauthorized person in possession of a uh, instrument that was uh, crossed state or foreign lines of commerce. They are, it is an ab abuse of the commerce clause. I got in some trouble many years ago. And I had a felony out of Florida. It was nonviolent, no person-to-person -person crime or anything like that. Um, but the reason that I came to the Bundy Ranch was not to commit a crime. It was not to harm anyone. I saw an American family being terrorized, and, and I came to pr preserve and protect lives and property and, and to cover the story on behalf of RTR Truth Media. And in Oregon, when that happened, I did the same thing, and I was set up by an FBI confidential informant uh, in a hotel room that she rented so that I could use internet to upload our next uh, 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 content. She went to the command post uh, and, and after placing items in the room, uh, turned me in and had me uh, uh, subsequently arrested. So here I am in Oregon, but you know what? I don't regret it. I don't regret it. I would do it a hundred times over again because the cause is righteous. It is righteous. And if we don't do it, we're already living in tyranny. If, if we don't do it, our children and grandchildren will hate us if they even remember us at all. I agree. Because they'll be trained to think the government is always right, no matter what, the government is your mama and your daddy. Oh, yeah, it's become and, a god to people. And, and Little G. government is not elegance. Someone once said 200 years ago, government is like a fire, and it needs to be controlled. Yes. That's why most of the Constitution tells the government what they can't do. Yes. They can't interfere with freedom of speech, press. It tells them what they, they can't do. They it flipped doesn't it. tell them what we can't do. They've really do. flipped it on its head, really, this started at, at the Civil War. But in the wake of the Civil War uh, and the forcing of the 14th Amendment into law, uh, many states, including the state I'm in right now, Oregon, rescinded the ratification when they realized that there was an underlying agenda to the 14th Amendment and the Reconstruction Acts that was uh, far beyond uh, creating equality for slaves, which I agree with. Of course, anybody who would, who would think that anybody should be enslaved is, is there's something wrong with them. Our founders were, were trying to put that uh, issue to rest, too. But anyway, the 14th Amendment that was not lawfully ratified you know, the, the president at the time, Andrew Johnson, said um, he said that if this is uh, allowed to move forward, it'll make the law itself unlawful and it'll create a de facto government. He said those two sentences in two different veto addresses. And it was Secretary of State William Seward that pushed it through uh, through executive order six and seven. Uh, and then, of course, we had uh, uh, the Act of 1871 and then we had the Federal Reserve Act in 1913. Then we had this wonderful Colonel Mandel House uh, and FDR and, and of course the bankruptcy and your yeah, <laughs> registration yeah. of your yeah. biological you property. Gotta, and... You gotta get off your probation and come to the conference this year. Oh, I, and I yeah, that. and listen guys, I've got to cut you off. We got to get back to Vegas. RTR Truth uh, Media, really... Resurrect the Republic with William Wagner. God bless you, sir. And happy birthday, Thank you. Thomas. This was a birthday present for me, Mr. Wagner. <laughs> God bless birthday. you. God bless you. And I'm so proud to have met you and known you from uh, from Bunkerville. Uh, we we came uh, together out, or we met up out there together. We did. 
Um, you know, I'm still good man. the ropes here. I'm just a person reporting. Yeah, and you and, are uh, the person reporting. You're you there, come. though, and we appreciate you being there, Vinny. Right on, brother. All right, Love God you, bless you. Goodbye, God bless. Bye, sir. Well, I don't Thanks. want to keep you guys. Uh, We're going to get uh, these out, you guys. Yeah, well, man, that's, that's my fault. Take care, folks.